Alright, uh, everyone. Now we are going to talk or continue our discussion about uh, your academic writings. And today we are going to talk about uh, how to write a good introduction for your thesis later on. But first of all, let's try to make a small review about how to write topic into title. Alright, in this occasion I'd like to share my highlight from my thesis review taken from the, in the last semester. This is uh, our learning about our uh, discussion from your brothers and sisters in writing their thesis. Alright, first of all I'd like to make sure that uh, everyone here know exactly how to write a good title for your research. So a good title, first of all, we are talking about the contents. So a good title should represent the content. That is the first. And then the second one, the second one is attractive, meaning that your topic is still new. New here, we can define new here in this context of your department, of course, Attractive means new, meaning that this topic, your topic, still new. Only a few students who discover or investigate in this area. That is the first. And the second one, attractive means your topic will give a great contribution to your prodi, a give contribution to the theory or great contributions to English language teaching and practices. That is what I define by attractive. And then the third one, a good title should be written shortly, not more than 14 words. Here. So, your title must be or try to avoid more than 14 words. The fourth is about abbreviation. Try to avoid abbreviations in your title. Take for example, when you wrote or when you want to write TPR, meaning total physical response. So here, please try to write them or write it in detail, full phrases total physical response and the fifth here avoid something like to write a study of or analysis of try to avoid this one yeah this is my suggestion since i found this uh, something like odd or vague that analysis itself automatically conducted in our research all right do you understand all right and the last one how to write a good title is write them in a good phrases or even in questions sir is it possible write our good title in a question form yes it's possible but there are more people, more writers, more researchers like to write the title in form of phrase or phrases. All right. All right, anyone? Let's try to continue then. And this is what we are going to focus at this moment. Today, discussions. How to to write a good introduction for our research proposal. Right. As I mentioned before, in introduction, in introduction, I mean, I'm sorry, there are three parts. The first is what have been done by other people. 
by other researchers in this area. And the second one, what have not been investigated on those research? And the third one, you propose. This is about your proposal. What you want to do. Yeah, what you want to do to fill the gap. What the gap here, sir? Well, actually, this is not easy as I wrote here the gap. Meaning that uh, even I myself uh, still struggling how to find gaps actually. But special for you in this context because you are still in undergraduate students, undergraduate study. Let me tell you something, little thing, how to make it simple. So, <clears throat> on your introduction, you have to show, you have to review what other people conducted a research on your topic area. That is the first. And then, you try to read again and again so that you find something interesting. Well, what's something missing on that research? What's something still undiscovered on those research? What are still skipped or not discussed on those analysis on their research? Yeah. So starting from here, you can think, well, what should I do then? Is there any something to be follow up? When you find something interesting to follow up, meaning you can be first following up actually what should be follow up. Something new, for example. Or you can try to imitate, meaning that, take for example, someone conducted a research and then the result is X, for example. Then you have to think, you think that, what about if that research conducted in your area, in your context, in Chirbon context? Will there be the same finding, the same result. Will X findings there will be found again in this context, in your context, or it will be different? That is something like imitating. So here, to make simple, you can't continue the research, meaning you want to find something new, or you can simply imitate what they've done, but using different contexts, different data, different participants, for example. And then you will see the difference later on, the research finding, the result. That is what I mean by something like gap. All right. To make it more clear for you, Let's try to discuss an example. All right, waiting a moment. Ah, all right, so this is take, for example, how to write an introduction. So here, the first paragraphs talking about the recent conditions, the condition of English language teaching in Indonesia. See here, first of all, the researcher show us how he explained how he show by using some evidences. Not only just saying, oh, the portrait of English language teaching in Indonesia had been reported by many experts without any evidences. But here, yeah, take here, 
the researcher shows the condition of ELT in Indonesian schooling context by showing the evidences. Take for example here by quoting researchers finding Yulia yeah, and Mustafa. Right. All right. Well, you see here, the researcher is not only showing but also try to explain further what's happening in English language teaching in Indonesia. How? By having reading a lot from the finding research taken from Julia and Mustafa, he gradually, steps by steps, move on, ex make explanation how Mustafa revealed his research findings and how the Julia's findings on their research. Uh, you can read by yourself later on. So, in several pages, yes, it could be, yeah, it could be. Then we'll see it again. The writers show us there are many research conducted in those area. Take for example in language teaching, and in this case, the use of TPLT, task-based language teaching which had already been introduced and manifested by scholars. However, uh, this is the interesting one. Yeah. However, mm, this one. Even task-based language teaching was reported successfully implemented in the Asian EFL context, for example, in Indonesia or some, somewhere in Asia, in China and so on. Yeah, having read a lot, then finally he shows something amazing. Something what other people, what other researchers did not cover or investigate yet. Didn't uncover here. Yeah, take for example, unfortunately. In spite of limited implementations in this country, there's still a few reports. This is, yeah, this is an entrance, entry point for you to start your research. You can state your, what is it, your entry point. You want to investigate further about this one. Right? Good. Yes. Now, uh, the rest he explains, the researcher explained further how the importance of doing those research. And finally, this is his proposal. From the overall paragraphs, finally, it found that it is interesting, it is a mess, it is neat, it is important to see task-based language teaching in dealing with student empowerment. So the researcher found this is an interesting thing, new thing to be investigated. Alright class, so when you finally yeah, successfully propose your proposal because something new in this case, so hardly or rarely do your supervisors or your examiners will reject? Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you.